Welcome everyone back. It is six o'clock now, so we're gonna get started now. So welcome to our sixth session of Shilok at Night. We are getting close to the end. So it's just two more sessions after this. So what we're gonna be going over today, uh, we're gonna start with another cool application of software engineering. And then the content for today is gonna be another way to be checking for mouse clicks, handling the mouse input. And then we're gonna be focusing today on functions. We're gonna be learning around, so we have learned uh, about how to be using these different functions. And today we're gonna be learning about how to be creating our own functions. So before we get started through everything though, we do have a poll question. All right, so we're gonna talk about a cool application of uh, software engineering here. Uh, so there is a, a tool called Deep Bar. So this is in the uh, uh, area of chemistry and they're using uh, what's called machine learning to be, uh, to be helping with uh, chemistry. So drugs uh, do their job by sticking to target proteins and they need the stickiness in order to be uh, actually effective. So we've got a picture on the right here. Now we've got the protein uh, is the big circle. The green is that target site where we want this drug to be binding. And in the pink, there's the actual drug and the idea is that it needs to get bound into that, uh, into that protein. So the problem though is that calculating this has um, been very computationally expensive. Uh, but scientists at MIT, they figured out a way to improve that. So they're using machine learning models to be calculating, uh, basically simulating how well are these drugs going to work using computer models. And now they found a way to do it a lot in a, a lot faster way. So we're gonna review a bit what we went through last session. So last session we had the four in range and we were learning about uh, using this uh, range. So the range, it gives us the uh, numbers from zero up to one less than the number that we've uh, specified. So range five, that's going to correspond to the numbers zero, one, two, three, four. So we can use that with our for loops. So in the example on the left, uh, this will repeat five times because we will have five numbers here. I will uh, match up with zero, one, two, three, four. So this will repeat five times. And on the right here, we are using that uh, variable i as an index to be iterating through both lists at the same time. So we're using both the uh, location and the size lists. We're drawing a circle, so we're able to use uh, both of those lists at the same time. All right, so for today's uh, content now, we're gonna start with the mouse input. So we've already learned a little bit about uh, how to work with the mouse input, but we're gonna introduce another way of, of working with this. And this is another, um, you can define your own function, similar to like the def setup and the def draw, you can use the def mouse down and then the code there is going to run whenever the mouse gets uh, pressed. So this will only happen once, uh, once each time. So every time that you're clicking with the mouse, whatever code that we have inside of that function, it will be running. So let's get to the example here. So if you want to be drawing a circle each time that we click, we can put that code inside this mouse uh, down function and that will run each time. So let's try this out. So I'll just put in a, a def setup and I'll put in a size. 
in the def draw, I'll put in a background. So that's just going to draw the background. And now we can try the def mouse down. And here we can put our code to be drawing a circle. And we can use the mouse X and the mouse Y. And then draw that with, say, a, rate, a diameter of 50. So now if we run that, you can see that each time that we're clicking, it does show up. But we have a bit of a problem that our background does actually draw over top of it. So it's not too good. Um, let's just try it without that one. So that background um, is actually just uh, erasing everything that we dropped, but without it, each time that we're clicking, it's uh, drawing onto, uh, onto the screen. All right, so we're not going to spend too long on the, the mouse input. So that's just the another way of um, handling the mouse input. So remember that there was the, the other way was the checking the mouse is pressed uh, variable. That's going to work just as well as well. So now we're going to be talking about the functions. So we've already shown a few different um, functions that we've defined. So this def setup the def draw and the def uh, mouse down, these are all a function definition. So we're creating these, these new functions. So we're gonna talk a bit about uh, what, what these are, how, how we create these, why we'd want to do that. So the functions, they have a block of code and they have a name. So such as the setup, draw, or the mouse down. And you can create uh, other functions with any names that you want. You can give them whatever names that you're, you're interested, uh, that you'd like to call them. And then we can also use them from our other code. We can uh, call those functions in order to have them uh, run. And this is going to let us be running a, a bunch of code from a single line. And that's going to make a bit more sense once we get to the examples. But that is, in summary, what a function is. So the purpose of this is that we can better organize our code. We can package our uh, sections of our code into these functions. And then we can be reusing that code now uh, whenever we need to. So this is going to make our code a lot shorter. Uh, we won't have to be rewriting code a lot of times. We'll just be able to uh, call the function. So a bit of an analogy here. If we have a vending machine, vending machines do a lot of different things. And they'll do the th these things many times uh, again and again. And so we could separate out the what it's doing into different functions. So taking in money and counting it, that's uh, one thing that it has to do. Taking in person's choice of food, dispensing the, the item if there is enough money, maybe returning money if there's something left over. So these different functions uh, would correspond to one, one simple thing that the vending machine does. So like I said, we've been using uh, functions for a while. So these are the predefined ones. So for example, the print function, we've got the circle, which draws the circle, fill style, which is changing the fill colors, background, which is painting a background for us. So whenever we are recalling one of these functions, we use them, they just do a single action for us. So other functions that we've been using. There's also the, the len, which gives us the length, and the random, the rand int. So you'll notice that these ones give us back a return value. So when we call these ones, they give us a 
value which we're then able to store in a variable. This is a bit different, uh, quite a lot different actually, from these other functions which they don't uh, return anything, they just do something. So the circle, it all, the circle function, it just draws the circle, but it doesn't give us back an actual value, it's just doing an action. So that's quite different um, than these other functions which they give us back a actual value. By themselves, it doesn't make sense to, uh, to not be assigning this to a, to a variable, that if, we, if we're not assigning these, uh, these to a variable, then it doesn't do anything for us. So let's go on to making our own functions. So we already showed with the, the mouse down that we can create these different functions, but these ones are a little bit special. So the, the draw function set up mouse down, these ones are treated especially by <clears throat> the uh, Spark library. So they do have a little bit special behavior, but the other functions that you can define, they are not gonna have any of that. Um, but you can still you can still use them. You can define them and give them any name that you want. So if you wanted to create another function, we'd be able to define that in here. We could call this draw house, for example, and then in here we'd have code for how to draw a house. So the function is going to have a body and that's where we'll put the code and so that's going to be running um, to implement the functionality that that we want our function to be doing. So why why to be using these functions? So in this example with drawing those houses that in your a draw function or in this case in the setup function you could have a lot of code to be drawing all these different houses. Here we have five different houses that we're drawing and the code is um, very similar. It's all the houses look pretty much identical. So the code is, is, is repeating a lot of parts. It looks pretty complicated, but don't worry about the exact, uh, exactly how it's, how it's working, but you can just see that there is a lot of code that we're repeating. And that's, that, that's not a great idea. So we can uh, take this code and put it into a function. So using a function, we can take all the code that we had that defines how are we drawing, actually drawing the house. And then each time that we want to draw that house, we can call this, uh, we can call that function and it's going to draw a house for us. So this is, uh, pretty much the same as those other uh, predefined functions that we have. So for example, like with the rect, if we're drawing a rectangle, we are creating a new function that we're calling draw house. And so similar to like, like the rect that we can also be calling our draw house. And inside this function, we've defined how, what steps do we actually need to take to be drawing that house. In the same way that these rect functions Inside those functions, they, they know how do you actually draw a rectangle to, onto the screen. So you can see that we've taken all these, uh, all this code from here, where it has uh, five different five times that we're trying to draw the same house shape, and now we're replacing that with a call to this draw house. In that draw house, we have our logic for how to actually be drawing the house. So we got our first quick question now. We've got four statements here. One of them is false. So you have to answer which one of them is false. All right, so we had quite a majority, 72% answering functions can only be called and draw. So this one is uh, definitely not true that we saw that on that previous slide that we are calling uh, these functions. These, these are function calls that we have inside here so we can call them from lots of different parts. 
Um, for the other one, that's the that they should be used to perform one specific action. So this is this one is true that we should be um, performing one specific action. So in this example here, drawing the house, that's the one specific house. So we don't want to put the code in here to be drawing trees or other things as well. So this isn't a strict, it's not strictly that you can't be performing more than one thing in it, but the, the keyword there was that, that it should. So functions, they, they should be doing one specific thing. All right, so now we're gonna to get to creating our first function. So here is the anatomy of a function. So far, the functions that we were uh, defining, you'll notice that, that we had these, these brackets here and it looks a little bit funny that why do we need to have these? And that's because sometimes we're going to have what are called parameters that go inside here. And so they aren't uh, required, but they are optionally, uh, they are optional. So if you don't have any parameters, you will leave that out and you'll have just the, the brackets by themselves. And the return value is another part that we haven't uh, shown in here. So that part is also an optional part. So you'll see that we don't have to include that. So this return part, it is optional. We're gonna talk more about these in later slides. But for now, uh, the important part is, the, is to to know that the required parts are the name and the body itself, or that the, what what code do we have that's implementing our function? So at at a minimum, we need to have the name and we need to have the body. So all the functions are going to have a name, and this is what lets us reference it. It lets us uh, it lets Python know which which function are we talking about? So in our draw function, if we want to be drawing this house, we have to use that name. And so that's what lets Python know that we're talking about this particular function. That's what the name is important for. So we got two examples here that on the left, we have the, the name and we can have parameters, return value. And on the right, we have a function without the parameter, without the return value, the uh, body would have to be filled in. So the functions also have to have the body, as we said, and that's where we put the code that is going to run. And so that's what the function actually does. So on the right here, if you want to have there are uh, we have our greeting function. So what does, how do we actually uh, do that greeting? Well, we need to have the code that's gonna do the greeting and that's the print hello, that's going to uh, implement that function. So a simple example here. So our first fu function here can be our def greeting so this function uh, is just gonna do something. So no, we won't have parameters, no return value. So much like the our, our def draw, it all it, our def draw just draw, draws things. It doesn't have to, uh, it doesn't need those parameters. It doesn't need the return values. It just has a block of code that just does the, um, does whatever we want it to be doing. So for this function, the name of it is the greeting. And the body, we have one line here, which is just print, hello everyone. So let's try that out. So we'll do def greeting. And then here we have our uh, code to implement it. So we'll do a print, hello everyone. So if we run this right now, nothing, we're not gonna see anything different actually. So that's because we haven't actually used our function anywhere. So, so far we've just defined this function, but we're not yet using it. 
So we can put it in our setup, for example. Let's put it into here. And now it's going to actually print out this hello, everyone. So when the code is executing, it's going to get to the greeting and it's going to uh, go over to the greeting function and it's going to run whatever is in our greeting function. So you can see at the bottom we have hello everyone printed out. If we use this multiple times, then it will happen, it will be run multiple times. So this will, we have it three times. So it makes sense that this will run three times and we'll print out three times, hello everyone. Okay, so we've basically shown this that we have to add that function into the code and we want to have that uh, same as with the def setup, def draw on its own, it, we want it outside of, of those other functions. So it's all gonna be in line. So you'll, you'll see that all our defs are gonna be, the, they're not gonna have any indentation. They're all just um, right uh, on the flesh with the, with the outside. So then for calling the function, uh, wherever we want to actually be using it, we will put the function there, we use the name, and we have the brackets to be, uh, to be indicating that we're calling it. All right, so now we've got our first exercise. So for this one, you'll create your own function. Uh, it should be called random circle. And when it gets called, um, so it should be called whenever the mouse gets pressed. And when it's called, it should draw a circle at wherever the mouse is with a random, random diameter and a random color. And the hint there to use the rand int can give you uh, 50 will give you the random number zero to 50. All right, so we'll move you to breakout rooms and we'll give you 10 minutes to be working on that. All right, looks like we almost have everyone back. All right, let's try out this, uh, this exercise. So I'll start with uh, doing a bit of the, the setup. So in the setup, I'll just set up, put the R size. And in here, I'll also put in a background color. I'll make it a light gray color. So we got a light gray now and for the draw function, we are going to be drawing that circle whenever the mouse is pressed. So let's start with, with, with how to do that. So we need an if statement and we'll check if our mouse is pressed. So we're using that variable that's gonna be true whenever our mouse is pressed. And for now, I'll just put a bit of placeholder here. I'll put in a circle at the mouse X, mouse Y, So we've done something pretty similar to this before. So that's working. So now the idea is that we want to have a, uh, our own function that's called random circle. And so we'll replace this line here with calling the random circle. So I'll just define that uh, function first, def random circle. And then here I'm gonna have the logic to be actually implementing that. And so I'll start by taking, I'll take this code out and I'll move it over into here. And now I'll replace uh, this, what I had there with drawing the, uh, uh, calling the random circle. So here we'll call the random circle and then this will run whatever is in here. So we're almost there. So this is gonna do exactly what, uh, be, what we had before. That's just gonna be drawing circles. So let's add in the random part. So we want to have the random diameter and the random color. So let's do the random diameter. So I'll assign to a, a variable and we can use 
rand int to actually get our random uh, value. So to actually get from 25 to 75, rand int uh, with 50, that's going to give us a random number between 0 and 50. So if we add uh, plus 25 to it, that's going to give us a range of 25 to 75. So now also let's do the colors. So red is uh, going to be rand int. And we have a range of up to 255. Do the same for green and blue. So to actually get that, that uh, set the color, we need to use fill style. We'll pass in the red, green, and blue, and use our diameter for the diameter there too. Okay, so that means we're getting our random diameter, get the random color, the red, green, and blue components, set the random set that color, then draw the circle, and all that's going to be called every time that our mouse is pressed. So let's run that. Let's try that out. And that is looking pretty good. We're getting lots of random circles, random diameters. Okay, so now we're gonna move on and we're gonna be talking about the parameters. So the parameters we've talked to, mentioned a little bit about them. So these are uh, optional, as we said before, that they are don't have to have uh, parameters for all the functions. Um, but when we do want to have them, these are going to be the uh, acting as inputs to this function, and they act very much like variables. So inside the function body, every parameter that you have. Uh, that you have listed is going to be uh, treated just like a normal function, a variable inside your function body. The special thing about it though, is that you don't have to be setting that value. It's going to be set uh, when, you're, when you're calling that function, whatever values that you call it with, those are called the arguments, and those are going to be uh, assigned to those variables, to those, uh, so those parameters will have the value that you were calling them with. So here's an example for that. So if you want to have a function that adds two numbers together, we would uh, give it two parameters, a and b. So you can see that in here, we're, we're giving a list of those parameters. So you have a comma b, that means we have two parameters, one called a, one called b. And then for the body, we can use those variables. So here we're using, we're using a, we're using b. We're just adding them together and then printing out that sum. All right, so we're going to try this out. So this is in your code. This is how, how this would look. So we've defined that function def add with the two parameters a and b. And then when we're calling it, we are passing in those two values, the three and the five. And they're going to uh, line up. So the first, the first value that we uh, that we are uh, using here is going to line up with our a. The second value is going to line up with the b. So then, when we are running this, when this code runs, when we do add three comma five, uh, when this code body is running, the a will be three and the b will be five. So let's try that out. So we'll put in put this into our setup function. Uh, let's see. Let's let's first define that function. Def r. It's a. What are we calling it? We're calling it add. And we have two parameters a and b. And we are assigning to the value to. Um, to sum, we'll do a plus b, and then we'll print out that uh, uh, value. So then to call it, 
uh, we just used just as before and then put in the two numbers we want to do. So let's start with three and five. So when we run that, we can see that it's using three and five. Three plus five makes eight. So the sum when it's printed out is going to be eight. If we uh, do this uh, another time, so we can call add uh, multiple times, we can use some other values. Could even use some negative values, eight and negative two. So now A and B, A is going to be the eight, B is going to be the negative two. So when it adds them together, we've got six here. And we can do zero and hundred, zero plus hundred. So each time, uh, whatever values that we're putting in here is going to be passed into this function. And they're going to be where it can use them uh, with those by the names of those parameters. All right, so we've got a quick, another quick question now. So there's two blanks here, blank one, blank two, and you're going to need to answer what those blanks should be filled in with. All right, it looks like we've got all the answers in. So we had 64% answering that uh, for blank one divided by three and blank two is number. So that was the correct answer. Uh, it was a little bit for all the other ones. So let's have, have a look how we can figure out what, what these blanks can be. So for this first blank, we wanted to, um, we're calling some kind of function. And so that has to be filled in by the name of that function itself. So putting in a function, well, the, the name of our function is not actually a function. The name of it is divide by three. So the only thing that can really fit in here and it's gonna make sense is divide by three. So that narrows it down to those two answers. Uh, for this one here, this, this blank two, it would need to be filled in by a parameter or could be empty, but most likely that would be, it would, we would have a parameter here. Now to figure out what that would be, we can have a look and see what, what names are we actually using in here. And so there's two possibilities, result and number. Um, the number is, if, if this blank wasn't number, then we'd ask, well, where's the number coming from? We don't see number anywhere else, so it would have to be a parameter. Result is, if that was a parameter, that's, that's possible, but then the number would be, um, uh, would be missing. We wouldn't actually have any, any variable called number. So it only makes sense that, that the parameter is called number. And then we are dividing that by three as, as the function is called even divide by three. So it takes in the number divided by three and it prints that out. All right, so now we're on to the, the last part of the, the functions, which are the, the return values. Uh, there was one question in the chat about how many parameters we can have. So parameters, you can have zero, there can be zero, so meaning it's optional. You can have one parameter, two, three, however many that you want. So we also have a return value. So these, this return value is what the function can give back to us. Uh, the return part, as, as we've noticed um, in the other functions, that it's uh, also an optional part. So this one, uh, we, we use uh, the uh, keyword return followed by the value that we want to have returned. And that value can be uh, anything. It can be a, a value. It can be like a number or a string, or you can have a variable name in there. It's uh, anything, anything that, act, that uh, becomes a value. So an example, so here we'll have a function that has return value. It's going to just return the value. It's not gonna have any parameters. So the function that we are uh, creating down at the bottom, two plus two, and it's just gonna return the answer. Answer is two plus two, so it returns uh, four. So when we call it, we have two plus two, we're calling that. 
And so that means that this is going to return a the number four, where that's gonna be assigned to x. And then when we print out, x plus one is gonna be uh, five. So in another example here, so this one is gonna be, is gonna be using a parameter. So calculating a cube volume. So we want to pass in uh, what is the length, what the, with the side length, and then based on that side length, we can calculate what the volume is. So in here we are implementing what's what's the formula to calculate the volume of a cube, and that's uh, multiplying mul multiplying the length um, by itself three times. So that's its length uh, cubed. So then to use that, we're calling our function calculate cube volume. We give it the value that we want it to be calculating with. So that's two. So then the side length is gonna be two. It's gonna use that in here. Then what, because it's returning it, so it's gonna return that value. So two times two times two, that's gonna give us eight. So it's gonna return that and that value that's returned from, from calling it is gonna be stored in our volume. And so then when we print it, we'll have that volume there. So we can quickly try this out. Um, actually, we can we can update this one. We can change this one up here to So uh, we can swap out that print. So remember that the print doesn't actually isn't uh, returning things. The print is just displaying it. So to actually get the value uh, out um, returned, we need to use the return keyword. So we'll return this value here. And now if we run this, it's not going to do anything uh, because these values, we're not doing anything with the returned values. So we would need to um, store that into a variable. And then we would want to do something with that. So here we'll, we'll print out those results. Let's just repeat that for this other one here. I'll just skip this one, I'll just take it out. So now when we run this, we're gonna be the values that are returned, they got stored in the result, then we were able to print it for the other one as well. So it's doing the same thing as before that it uh, adds those values together. And then when it's returned, it's stored in our variable. And then we can use that variable however we want. And in this case, we're printing that out. All right, so now we're to our second exercise where we're gonna tie everything together. So you're gonna create a function uh, that's named average. And that's gonna be using two parameters, uh, one called X, one called Y. And it's gonna return the average of those uh, two numbers. And then whenever the mouse is pressed, you'll call the average, passing in the mouse X, mouse Y. And that's gonna return the average of those two numbers, and then we'll use that to draw a, a stroke circle. So use stroke circle at the position of the mouse using that returned value as the diameter. All right, so we're gonna move you to breakout rooms now and you'll have 10 minutes to work on that. All right, looks like we almost have everyone back. All right, so let's go through this together. So we need to be drawing the those circles when our mouse is pressed and we're using our uh, the function that we defined that we call average so let's start with implementing uh, that that uh, average function so we're creating our new function def average we want to uh, pass in two parameters so we'll have x and y and then we're going to be calculating the average so to do that we do x plus y and then divided by two, but we do need to wrap these in brackets because we want the divide by two to apply to both of them and not just the y. So the order of operations that the bed mass that does apply. And we can uh, put that into, assign that to a result, then return result. And now we can use this function and uh, we're gonna, let's do a, 
just set up our size here and put in a background. And then in our draw function, that's where we can actually use the, uh, the mouse is pressed and use that average function. Okay, so we need to be checking if the mouse is pressed, then we're going to be using that stroke circle and we're using mouse X, mouse Y. Now for that diameter, uh, let's call that one D. So to, uh, to figure out what's the size we have that, we're gonna be using that average function that we just defined. So we use D is equal to, and we'll call our average function, uh, our function. And we need to pass in the X and Y. And so we'll be using the mouse X, mouse Y. So that's going to pass in the mouse X, mouse Y, give us the average of those two. Assign that the return is gonna be assigned to our D variable. And then we're using that for the diameter when we're stroking that circle. So let's try running that. See, we got our background so far. And we can see that when our mouse X and mouse Y is really low, we have a small circle, small diameter, and the larger ones, we have a really big diameter. All right, so that's that's doing what we wanted then. So that's how, how that uh, sh should have looked for you, defining that, that average function with those two parameters and returning the uh, calculated uh, result. Okay, so there's one final note in here that if you want to be using uh, global variables. So one example here is that if you have a, uh, a function that uh, implements the taking damage. So if you have some uh, character and he has some, some hit points, so you'll have that as a global variable. And then whenever he's supposed to take damage, might be some condition that if he gets hit by a monster, then he needs to take damage. You can call that function. And because it's we're we're updating that global variable, we will use the global keyword to say that our health, that health is that referring to the global variable. And we can update the health minus, subtract one from it. And we can check then if the health is zero, then it's gonna be game over. Okay, so now we are at the uh, end of session exercises. Uh, so when you look at these slides, um, uh, yourselves in the speaker notes, there'll be some hints about how to be implementing these. Uh, for this one, for, for both of these, the idea is to be using functions. So define a function that's gonna be drawing these, uh, these scared faces. And then whenever you're clicking then to be calling, to be drawing that. And on the right-hand side, pretty similar. We've got the trees. There's a bit of a random color for the, for the tree. And for Pythonic Lava, we have um, these dartboards. So you uh, implement a function that's going to take in some parameters. So you can specify what size you want and where to be drawing it. And then calling that function multiple times to draw those multiple uh, dartboards. Then on the right, uh, this one is uh, if you're holding down the mouse to be uh, incrementing this, uh, this counter. And then when you let go, to actually draw that circle, calculate a, an area of the circle and print out what's the area of the circle. Uh, so those extra hints are in the speaker notes if you have a look at the slides yourself. And some uh, examples here for just for fun. All right, and that is the end of the slides for today. So we're gonna move you to breakout rooms to uh, work on those exercises. And we're gonna give you almost 20, 20 minutes. It's gonna bring us to the end of today's session.